All right, shalom again. We're going to get into the the prayers and the blessing, the blessing for the for the bread and the wine, and we also want to touch on some um some basic education that you can begin in your home, even if you have youths with your youths, and it's very very important. It will help to give them a groundation and a and a foundation. It's the Hebrew, the 22 Hebrew of the Hebrew alphabet. We recommend acronistic psalms such as Psalm 119. Psalm 119, if you look at it, let's bring this over, if you look at it in, in better King James versions like this right here, here's Psalm um, 119. If you look at, you see the Hebrew has Aleph, right, the Aleph right there, and it shows you the Hebrew, and then it has the Beit, you can say no, Beth, Beit, then it goes on further with the Gimel, you know, and all through the psalm, basically. So every eight verses, what you have every eight verses, beginning with the, the first, 119 is a very long psalm. Um, it's the longest of the psalms, and it has about 176 verses. And these are divided in points of, points of eight. Every eight verses inches a new Hebrew, a new Hebrew um, letter, the next Hebrew letter. So we have the Aleph to Tav or to Tau, the Aleph to Tau, or what will be the Hebraic Alpha and Omega. And that has 22 um, letters, well known as 22 um, letters or Fidels. Now we get to, that's, that's the first step. So 22 comes before 33. So we're going to touch on the Hebrew 22, the 22 letters of the Hebraic um, alphabet. You understand? The Aleph, Beit, or the first house, or the first two letters are Aleph and Beit. So when we say alphabet in the English, the, the, the groundation, the foundation for us is one, once lost, but now found Beta is Avayel, is the Hebraic alphabet. So all this is basic kindergarten. And so even many of us who, all of us, true in truth, who are born again, should start out by learning our basic um, Hebraic ABCs. And the Hebraic ABCs will be the Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Daleph, Iska, Tav, or Tau, to the, from A to T, or really A to Z, according to what we know in the West. And I want to touch on the prayers, or the, really the blessings, rather, it's the blessing, the Baruch of the bread and the wine, seeing that Passover, Fasika, is coming up this year. Um, sunset of April 6th, 2012, to um, the 13th, to the 13th. So from sunset of the sunset of the sixth, sunset of the sixth, and you find that in our um, Hebraic uh, Judaic calendar for this year, um, we call it year 81 Ameta Bejua, or the year of the Redeemer. So we count it from the coronation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, the Adis Zemin, or the true new age. And this is the 81st year as we're on the cups of, 20, of, of 2012, the 2013, and the 2012 event coming up as many are looking forward you know, to that particular day. But the day of the Lord is also another related subject matter. I don't know if you've done much research in the scripture. You hear a lot of people saying, well, this is the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. But have you studied from the word what it says concerning the day of the Lord? It is very, very interesting because we learn that there would be heavenly signs. There would be heavenly signs even this time. But we as Hebrews, we as Beta Israel, as Ethiopian Hebrews and black Jews, and amongst the elect Rastafari, who are like the, the, the priests. Remember, the order of, of Judah replaces the old dispensation of Levi. So therefore, through the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, a, a new um, kingdom of the priesthood, which in Revelation is Rastafari. You understand? Vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopian Hebrew diaspora, often called either black Jews, um, euphemistically, 
um, known as Beit Israel, the house of Israel, the Bani Israel, the once lost but now found, the black sheep. There are many different um, names, scripturally, biblically, and even extra biblically, that's used to define or to relate to who we are. And in different uh, black, Jewish, and Hebrew, Israelite schools of thought, it, it's different among different teachings of it, but the basic roots basically point to who we are. You know, so though there may be differences between the elect Rastafari and the so-called black Hebrew Israelites, still the, the foundation, the foundation is one and the same. And even our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he says, in my father's house, there are many mansions, and it's the Rastafari and the elect Hebrews who truly know who our Father is and the name of our Father and the name of His Son. So may God and I go forward and let us teach on this particular teaching right here. So the, the alphabet, the language is, is so important. We've touched on this from um, Slick Willie Lynch you know, Slick Willie or the Willie Lynch um, papers, How to Make a Slave. They said they want to take away our original language, take away our mother tongue. This is one of the reasons why they didn't want us to read the Bible. So if you look at, um, where's Willie Lynch? Where, where's Willie Lynch right here? If you look at how to, the How to Make a Slave papers, you will see quite clearly, quite distinctly, it was articulated that they did not want us to know um, our, to sever us from our mother tongue. And our mother tongue is the Hebrew. And the pure language of the King of Kings and his Christ is the royal Amharic or the Amharic of the, of the Metzhaf Kedus, of the Book of the Seven Seals. But the first step in our education is based on the basic teaching. So it's like kindergarten right here, us going through now the 22 Hebrew and Psalm 119. Hopefully in your Bibles, it, it, it has the acronistic and, and as it has it in the, in the, in the Schofield um, reference Bible, we have, I mean, it's very small. So you can go on the internet and look up the Hebrew alphabet and you know, you can, you can download something and print it out and, you know, cut it out, fold it up, you know, give a copy to your children, too. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is a good practice for them. And it's a good introduction for your children to learn the 22, the 2-2 two -two of the Hebrew alphabet, our mother tongue. So let's go into it right now. All right, let's, let me clear this board here. And, uh, you know, we have, this is it right here, controlled language. So when you look into to Wooly Lynch, you understand? It says right here, it says right here, for further severance from the original beginning, we must completely annihilate the mother tongue. So you see it right there where they want to completely annihilate, you know, the mother, the mother tongue. And our mother tongue is the Hebrew, and all this is contained in this particular document, Let's Make a Slave. This is how it all began. This shows us the beginning of our situation and for further reference for the reference Dick Gregory's uh, um, Bible Tales is an excellent book we've talked about this before this is an excellent book you probably can look this up on the internet and there's still some sellers it hasn't been in republication but it needs to be in a republication it makes a great um, like Sunday school so to speak or Sabbath school um, Bible studies, this right here, Bible tales. So it's excellent for children. It's, it explains both the Bible and some very important um, moral lessons because it's a moral theocracy. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a moral theocracy in the revelation of Rastafari. Now, these two books right here from Babylon to Timbuktu, which goes into additional historical matter because now with all this so called uh, um, racial profiling, you know, because of, the, because of this right here, the hoodies, because people are wearing the hoodies, so, you know, there's all this racial profiling going on, 
you know. So we explain that there's a there's a high monastic value to these hoodies. You see, in their own European versions of our ancient priesthoods, they also wear these hoodies. Even the graduation, the graduation robe, it also has a hoodie um, component to it, which comes from that ancient Hebraic and Judaic and Ethiopic root. So, because people don't know this, you know, because we kept in ignorance and we don't teach our children these facts, we get, we keep seeing what we get, keep, get we keep seeing what we're seeing, man. You know, um, anyway, these are some books. This one right here, um, The Valley of the Dry Bones, and we've been mentioning this over and over, and even we're surprised. Um, on one hand, somewhat pleasantly su surprised because it allows us an opportunity to say, listen, this is what we've been talking about. But because of the, the deaths and the murders of our people, especially like with Trayvon Martin's uh, case and many other cases uh, like there too, and this whole thing is getting more and more exposed, and we want to touch on a couple of recent developments about that. But we just think it's important to remind our people about the half of the story. So these are two books by um, um, Rudolph Windsor, but from Windsor's Golden Series. You understand? Um, from Babylon to Timbuktu. This is, this is real black so-called History Month teaching. Not just for History Month, but this is real um, teaching that's not taught in our schools and even not even taught in our homes. We can talk about the schools on a certain level, the public schools. We lack our own um, institutions at this present time, but there's no excuse that this is not taught in our black homes and especially in our black churches. Yovas, some may want to dismiss this, but they haven't even checked it out for themselves. Please check this out for yourself from Babylon to Timbuktu to know where we're from and how we get here and who we are, and what's our true, you understand, what's our true Hebrew identity all about, then that will begin to open one's eyes when they're looking at the Bible and when they're looking at the scriptures. And then they'll begin to really recognize who we are and, and, and why, what's happening to us, and more importantly, how we overcome. This is what we get to learn from this, how we overcome. Gradually, more and more ones are becoming interested in this because more and more things are, are, are shocking their consciences. You know, things that they say, I can't believe that. Well, you need to know the truth. When you know the truth, then you can really talk about, I am free, I am a man, we shall overcome. We have overcome already, but we're kept in ignorance about how we've overcome. We overcome when we recognize that we were once lost, but we are now found, Beta Israel, that we are Ethiopian Hebrews. Then we start to make those connections, and then our eyes start to open up, you understand? And then the church ministry becomes glorious, but right now, it's a curse. It's a curse because they're not teaching Jah word. We're in the valley of the dry bones right now, brothers and sisters. This is why all the youths are running around wearing these skulls and bones and everything. You know, we're in the valley. These are the conditions that face black people in America. And how long have we and others, even before us, been speaking about these things? And they've been referred to as kooks and, and as um, so-called black supremacists and as a black liberation theology. We've been derided and misrepresented, but the evidence that we speak about, more and more incidences and situations come out verifying what they were saying we were kooky and crazy and, and, and racially, you know, we're trying to, race is very sensitive so we can't talk about it. You see what all that suppression of this knowledge has caused? It's causing more deaths. It's causing more destructions. It's causing more, more baby mamas and, and baby fathers, you understand, to lose their children. And there's no excuse, you understand, under Jah's sun and on Jah's earth for this to go on. 
any longer, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying we're going to get into the, the Fidels and the Hebraic, but just explain, well, why we're learning. How is that our mother language? How is that our mother tongue? In time that we have, let us get into this. So we were touching on the church equals the house of the anointed, the true church, the ecalio. The, the foundation is that true faith. You understand? What is the amen? And then the apostles' doctrine, the teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, the communion, and the prayers. This is the apostolic order. You can, you can document this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. In an earlier teaching um, vid that we posted, we went into a little bit more detail in a two-part on Rastafari Church. We call it Rastafari Church 1 and Rastafari Church 2. So this is also an aspect of the same churchical teaching that we want to continue on. And it's the 22. It's our mother language, 2-2. Two, two. All right, let's get into it right here. So now, as we suggested and, and recommended, when you go to, um, let me bring some of this other material out here, open the Ment off, deduce to Psalm 119. So let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 119. Now, if in the version of the Bible that you have, whatever version of the Bible, if you turn to Psalm 119 and you don't see the acronistic, you don't both see the, the Hebrew letter, the Masoretic Hebrew letter, um, in, in, the, in the Psalms, Psalm 119, then you need to get a better Bible. That, that, that's what we want to suggest. So if your Bible does not, you know, if your Bible does not have that and um, does not contain that, um, then you have a bad Bible. You understand? You don't have a very good Bible right here. So whatever version that you have, you know, and on language too, you know, we have some additional, we have the Amharic homeschooling, which we want to go into a little more detail on, the Amharic homeschooling. Like I said, check us out on the web, www.lojsociety.org, and click on the books link. This is a new one right here, Ethiopic, uh, our first language. It's in Ethiopic, our first language, or the first language, really the first language. When you understand Ethiopic, the first language, this is by I, I and I. Then there's another older book that had come out uh, previously, um, and it's by Ayala Bekeri, or Bekere, you understand, Bekere, you understand, this is Ethiopic. Right, Ethiopic and African writing system. Also an excellent book, you know, which is available. So here we go, so you can see the, the name and the title. Because language is key. Language language is a real key. And I submit to you, brothers and sisters, one reason why our children might be having a lot of difficulty, you understand, a lot of difficulty with education you know, and learning is they're not given a true foundation of, first of all, who they are. You know, so all their life in the back of their minds, there's still that, that, that blank space, that empty space of who am I? Where am I from? Why am I, why are my people in this situation? And, and why are we affected in a different way than all other peoples? You know, you know there's, that, there's, that, there's that question that, never gets answered, you know, whether in the homes. It's like they were just told, well, that's the way it is and can't say nothing about it. We're not taught, that, we're not taught it in, in the majority of these so-called black churches. You know, and there's a big judgment on the black church right now as we are ending this church age. You know, and this is not to be cruel and unkind. This is to be actually um, sincere, straightforward, and honest when we speak about this. Some don't like us talking about the so-called black church, so forth and so on. But the black church is in a state of apostasy. As it says the church of Laodicea, they're neither cold nor hot about the real truth. They're just trying to get by, you know. And while they're supposed to be speaking for, be watchmen for John and, and, and announcing to the people who they are, 
and why they're facing such conditions, the conditions that really face us in the valley of the dry bones, you know, they are failing to do their job. Now, that being so, this is the reason why there is the call to come out of Babylon, to come out of counterfeit religions, even if it's a so-called black church, if they are not speaking the truth, then that means that they are telling lies, and the Almighty is not pleased with that, you understand, and there's a curse, there's a curse upon them, there's a curse upon them, it's not us cursing them, Yah has already said this, so let's get into our mother tongue, so Hebrew, you understand, Hebrew, right, is our mother, you understand, our mother language, or really we could say our mother, right, our mother tongue, okay, uh, hope you can read this, our mother tongue, our mother language, we already pointed to how to make a, how to make a slave, so what are the, what are the 22 of the Hebrew. As we said, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles to Psalm 119. And as we go, each eight verses, we'll go through it. So what we're going to do, we're going to write it, actually, we're going to write it from, on this board right here, from left to right. But Hebraic, you understand, in um, Masoretic times, is written from right to left. So with that being noted, the first one, right, the first one is, is, Aleph, right? Aleph, Aleph. That's the first one. So we have Aleph. Then we have um, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies and that seek Him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, no lawlessness, no rebellion. They walk in His ways. Thou hast diligently commanded us to keep thy precepts uh, diligently. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect to all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. And one important statute is coming up in this present 2012, and that's the Fasica. That's the Pesach. You understand? That's our Passover. And in 2012, it begins the sunset of April 6th to the 13th. So we have Passover and the the unleavened bread, the, the festival, the feast of the unleavened bread, the seven days. All right? So that's just that's how this connects when it speaks about bless, Baruch, Baruch. Bless are the undefiled in the way. Yeshua, Hamoshia says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You understand? And we learn that Yeshua, he fulfilled Torah. You understand? He's a manifestation, a living manifestation of Torah. So we have to know what Torah is so that we want to have a veil over our eyes in the reading of Torah. So blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law, in the Torah of yod Hey wow Hey. So those eight verses right there are very important. Now when we get to the ninth verse, we find um, Beit. So the second letter, right, the second letter we have is, and we're going to spell it the way that it's spelled in, in the King James, the subscription of the King James Bible. So we have Aleph, Beit, right? Do you see this right here? We have Aleph, one, and, and, and Beit. This is where we get alphabet. You know what I'm saying? This is where we get, we get al fa. We get alphabet. When you take off the H, it's bet. Some say bait. Beth. You understand? Know really, it's bait. Bamarinya. In the good is, we get the pure language. You understand? Know because this is the mother, right? This is the mother tongue. 
our our mother tongue and our pure language is the royal Amharic. So we deal with the 22 before getting to the 33, because 22 comes before 33, right? So these are our 22 degrees, the, the, the Hebraic alphabet. So we're now at number two, right? So we're going to move to number three. Thirdly, we have, right, we have Gimel, right? We have Gimel. You know what I'm saying? So this would be the ABCs, Aleph, Beit, you know what I'm saying? Beit, Aleph, Beit, Gimel. Aleph, Beit, Gimel. Then fourthly, right, then the fourth one we have, when we get to verse 25, is Dalet. Right? So let's get this. We have the Dalet. Right? We have Da. Right? We have Dalet. It says Dalet. You know what I'm saying? Dalet. So, so you see this over here? We have Dalet. Now when we get to the fifth one, and so it's very easy if you're, if you have a good Bible, especially the King James Version of the Bible, a good Bible will have such subscriptions. Let's just give you a close-up one more time on this. Give you a close-up right here. So you see right here, right? You see at every, at every point right there, right? So we had Dalet. Then when we get to 33, the 33rd degree, right, what do we have? We have hay, right? Hay. So here we have the hay. Let's deal with, we have H, E. You might see it as he, but it's really a, it's really a hay. Like when we say hey, 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 you know, hey, hey, hey. I know you know Fat Albert, but maybe that's the only way you'll get it. The sound of it is hey, right? So we have hey right here. Hey right here. So let's deal with the six, right? The six adverse, um, now, 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 something they do that's a little bit interesting right here. We notice this in the Schofield, uh, that when we get to Vav, it just has the letter Vav, and we get down here to Zion, it just has the word Zion. It's not like up here with hay, right? And you can see hay. You can see how it has, you know, it has, it's very small. But like I said, go to the Internet. You know what I'm saying? Go to the internet, you know, as it would be when you go to the internet, you find it. So what we're going to do, since we see that's the situation, since that's the situation there, you know what I'm saying? Since that's the situation there, we're going to find, let's see, get one of our other books right here. And within the, within the time that we have, let's see. See how many alphabets you got in this one right here. From the time that we have, let's use either our we we'll use our book. I think we we'll use our book because this mainly is focusing on the on the good, which is very important. But in our context, of who we are as a people, because because finding that right there is a little bit disappointing. But at least it gives you this and. Ethiopic, our first language, goes into a little bit better, right? We got a couple of minutes left in this clip right here. So what they don't have right here is the, as you can see right here, is the, the Vav, right? So it goes up to 33, then it skips two steps, if you notice, and the, the Zine. You see the Zine right there? The Vav and the Zine. You know, the Vav and the Zine. You know, so let's go to the, really the wow, the wow, but they have Vav, so we're going to go with what they have first, and then we're going to check it out further. So they have V-A-U, and then at the seventh, right, they have um, Zion, so we have something like that. We have Z-A-I-N. At the eighth, right, we have Het, Het. Or you might see Chet, but really it's a Chet, right? It's Chet. Then at the nine, right, we have we have Tot. Let's bring this over here again. Let's see. When we get to verse uh, 65, we have Tet, right, which, which is something like, right, we have. Then at the tenth, right, at the tenth, we go to 10th, we have Job. Now, Job, likewise, 
verse 73. So they seem to skip some Hebrew letters here. But they have Jod. You understand? They have Jod, right? Which is with a Yod. And the tenth is like, looks a little like this, like a hand. We pointed it out before. Yod, but they have Jod or Jod. You understand? Jod. It's interesting because Jod would be more correct instead of God or Yod. Yod instead of G O D. The J really originally the Y O D. Now at the 11th, and when we get to verse um, 81. 81, we might just have opportunity in this to get to verse 81, which will be the 11th, right? Verse 81, we have cough, cough, right? So let's put, right, we have cough. We have a C A P H, right? Cough. So we have cough right there. So as we move forward, we get to the 89, and we have Lamed, right? So we have verse. Verse, we're saying verse 89, but the 12th, remember there's 22, there's 22, so we already have, so start with maybe this half first, right, this half, so we'll just keep going to the, what is it, Lamed, we have Lamed, right, and it's L-A-M-E-D, then 13, there's that number again, 13th, we have mean. What is known as mean. So, so let's see if we can bring mean. We have I mean. All right. You see it more better, more better when you see it in the print. And you know we practice this. You know practice makes um a perfect. So we all have room right here to go forward. So we're gonna do the second part from from eleven, really twelve. 12 to, to finish up on the on the 2-2 in the available amount of time. But you'll see a, a really good treatment of it. Initial treatment should be in the Bibles, and we were surprised looking at the King James right here, the Schofield, and seeing that in some letters it's missing. In some letters it's missing, you know, which is kind of curious. We said it's a Masonic Bible, right? King James Version. So there's some reason that when you get to the 33, you know, hey, is where it, it, it jumps a step, two steps actually. When we go to Vav in 41, there's no Hebraic letter. And neither with Zion, there's no Hebraic letter. Then we get to Chet, Chet, right? And then we have um, the Hebrew, Hebrew comes in, uh, S, you know, eight, at, the Hebrew comes in there. Um, Joe, that 73, there's no Hebraic letter. But then the Hebrew comes back when we get to Kaf, which is the 81st verse of Psalm 119. Now, as we mentioned before, in our book right here, you know, we go into this in more detail and actually give you a comparison with the hieroglyphics. So you can see a comparison with the hieroglyphics. And for the Rastafari Book Club, this is... Ethiopic, the first language. Ethiopic, the first language, which is, a, which, which is an introduction written by yours truly, by I, Ras, I, Adonis, Tafari. So get a copy of this. This will help you go into more detail. But try to teach yourself and teach your children the 22. You understand? And reclaiming our mother tongue. You can go right into the Bible, right into Psalm, right? Psalm... 119, and, and in good Bibles, at least they will have some, some of it. They should have the letter, the letter in Hebrew, the Hebraic Masoretic letter, and an English um, translation or transliteration. So we went through Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, or Vau, Zain, Chet, Tet, Yod, or Jad, Kaf, Lamed, Mean. You understand? So we're going to take it, we're going to do at least half.